Welcome everyone. My name is Michael Sir Leo for Boris FX, and today we're going to explore how to add some realistic gobo lighting effects using the light filter options and easy masking in optics. Now, if you're familiar with projectors or optical spotlights, you know that they can be used to create some pretty awesome lighting effects. Now, these units go from anywhere about four to $700 price range, uh, depending on the brand, which for me is the price I'd probably rather invest into a new strobe. Um, now, they come with these little discs uh, called gobos, and they have shapes inside, and they fit inside the projector. And then you project those shapes using the focusing lens onto or behind your subject. They are really fun to play with, and as much as I've enjoyed using them, they are an extra piece of equipment that I really don't want to have to carry around with me. A lot of times I don't have an assistant with me, so I don't want to be lugging around copious amounts of gear. Now with optics, I'm actually able to go in and add the shapes afterwards in post. So we're going to go in and we're going to do that now. All right, so we're going to start with this image here. Now I am not going to make any adjustments in Camera Raw or Photoshop. I like it the way it is straight out of the camera and we are going to do all our adjustments in optics. Now first thing we're going to do is we're going to click or double click on the background layer and we're going to convert this to a smart object. And now from here we're just going to click on the filters, click Boris FX and optics. And this is going to load our interface. All right, so as the interface loads, if you look on the left hand side, you can see the layer section. And if you're familiar with Photoshop, it works the exact same way. So we can add layers, we can move the layers around, and we can make adjustments to them as needed. So let's just reset this. So we're going to go to the beginning, and what we're going to do is we're going to click on the light tab, make sure that's clicked, and we're going to head straight to the gobo section, which is in the light button over here. Now these are our gobo presets. From here we can click on different ones to find the shapes that we're looking for. And if you click on the top you can see all the different elements up here. We are going to stick with the shutters. And the reason why I'm choosing this is because it has a nice gap in between. You know what, we can do this one here. Now we're going to click on the parameters and we're going to adjust the scale first. We're going to increase the size and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate it a little to the left to match the light on her neck. And now we're just going to grab the center and we're going to move it over like this. Okay, and now we can adjust everything as needed. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to the top and we're going to change the blend mode to screen. So it looks a little bit more realistic. Now we can adjust the brightness. And right now I'm looking at her hair, as well as this part, but this is the part I'm looking at the most. Now from here, we're going to go to displacement, and we're going to displace it a little bit. Just so it looks a little bit more realistic the way it comes in and then it hits her hair. And now I'm going to turn down this blur mode here, because this, as we increase it, also fades the light around her skin area. And I do want her skin to stay sharp, so I'm going to turn this off. And we're going to adjust the blur on the gobo only, which is down here. See, and that looks a lot better. Okay, and now we can adjust the brightness of the room. We're going to just bring the shadows in just a little bit. And now we're going to create a mask. So if we click over here to the top left and we're going to click add mask, we are going to use the easy mask function. Now, just make sure the foreground's clicked. And we're going to paint in our foreground. And you don't have to be perfect. Optics really took masking to another level. But what I'm going to do is instead of masking her out, I am going to bring it closer to her face because I do want the light on her hair. And then I'm going to bring it in like this. Now we're going to click on the foreground. I'm sorry, we're going to click on the background. Now we're going to paint in the background. Okay, and now I'm going to paint it in from here because I do want the light on her hair. And just like that, now we're going to click Generate the Mask. 
and we're going to invert this mask so the light's not touching your face. Now let's take a look and you can see it looks pretty good. We still have the hair strands, the lights in behind, and I think that looks pretty good. So now let's just adjust the brightness a little bit. And I think we can bring the blur down just a touch. There we go. And I think that looks pretty good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create another layer and we're going to adjust the coloring. So I'm going to click into film lab and we're going to go straight into film stocks. And I really do love this section. Um, it, does bring back a time when I used to shoot film. So we're going to go straight to color films and we're going to find the one that looks the best for our image. And I think I am going to go straight down to Kodachrome as I used to love shooting with Kodachrome. And I think this one looks really good. Let's make an adjustment to the shadows. We're going to scroll down a bit and we're just going to Slide it a little bit to the left. And let's see it before and after. I like it. So we're going to go right back into Photoshop by clicking the Done button. And now it's going to add the effects to Photoshop as a smart filter. And there you have it. So now if you click on the little eyeball here, you can turn off the filters and turn them on better. Now see the optics button here. If you double click that, you can go back into optics and make your adjustments as needed. All right, so we have enough time to do one more image. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load this one into the optics plugin and we're gonna go straight into it. So we're gonna click on the light tab and we're gonna click on the light button where our gobos are kept. And we're going to find one that kind of matches that huge window that she's sitting in front of. I think this one works really well. And again, we're going to start by increasing the size to find where we want to place it. I'm going to rotate it just a little bit. And basically, I'm looking at this back curtain here. And I'm, I'm keeping an eye on the wall and the floor. So we're going to bring it up like this. We're going to adjust the rotation. And I'm just going to slide it over a little bit here. And I think that looks good. So let's go back to the top and change the blend mode to screen. I'm going to turn off the blur because, again, the blur softens the image way too much for me right here. And I'm going to adjust the displacement. And keep an eye in this area here how it wraps around the curtains. And I love how it kind of wraps around her shoulders and her arms. It looks a lot more realistic. And so let's blur the gobo itself a little bit more. And I think that looks really good. Now see this section here? This section I don't think light should be hitting. So let's get rid of the light right here. And to do that, we're gonna create a mask again, but instead of the easy mask, we're gonna create a path. And a path kind of works like the pen tool in Photoshop. We can just kind of draw the area we wanna mask by creating a path. And we'll just keep it simple like this. And let me invert the mask again. And now we can adjust the area as we see fit. So let's take a look. And I think that works really well. And then we can go back in and we can make another adjustment here and there. And now we're gonna create another layer and we're gonna just quickly change the color tones. So I'm gonna go back into the film lab and back into the film stock. And the reason why I like this is because I came from a background where we shot a lot of film back in the day. And I, I kind of has a bit of nostalgia to it. So I'm going to click on the color films and let's pick something different. Let's go for Fuji. I am a fan of Fuji. So this one works really well. And now I want to bring down the tone just a little bit. So I'm going to go into the parameters. I'm going to come down and I'm going to just raise the shadows just a touch just so I can add a little bit more definition. And I think that works really well. Let's bring it back into Photoshop. And that is how I like to use optics to create gobo effects in post.
As you can see, once we've set up an optics project, it's very easy to go back in and make variations. So here's the original images. And here are a couple of different versions I made by simply changing the gobo pattern and the film stock. And that is certainly something that is a little bit more difficult to do quickly while on a shoot. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please visit us at BorisFX for more image editing tips using optics.